have some people that have done a lot for the community of Faribault. We have Peggy Kylan, we have Tammy Schluter with the historic Hutchinson House B&B, and we have the people that handled the restoration. We have Rick from American Restoration. How are you guys doing this morning? Wonderful. <laughs> well, I hear actually that people might be just a little bit sleepy, but we're going to get you some caffeine right. because at 3 p.m. there's going to be the unveiling. And why don't you guys tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, we're going to be having uh, the public unveiling of the car, which they did at, down at Rick's Restaurant in Las Vegas. It's going to be right down on Central Avenue, 128 uh, Central Avenue, right in front of Burkhart's Mayor Shoes. Three o'clock this afternoon, we're going to unveil uh, the entire community, county, everybody, come on down, meet Kelly and Rick. Afterwards, they've promised to go off to the carnival and uh, ride the tilt world with uh, guests. That'll be oh really Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, we don't need lunch for that one. <laughs> I promise. Did I say that? When did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, did you say that? Also, um, the, the core businesses who are on that corner, so um, Burkhardt Myers, of course, Bernie's, The Signature, and then Studio 14 are doing a little reception uh, with lemonade and cookies. So, you know, people should just come down, enjoy, take a look at what we've got, and have a nice afternoon. It's gorgeous outside. It is. It's a beautiful afternoon for it, and it's really an iconic part of a lot of people's childhood. So it's a great opportunity to sit in this beautifully restored car, have your photo taken, and share that with your friends. And it falls really nicely, too, with the celebration of Verbo's Heritage Days as well. So they can go sit on it, see the restored version, and then go ride a current active one, which is a lot of fun. Now, you guys restored it. How long was that process? It took us probably about a month to do, right? A month, month and a half. Um, I think the thing, the biggest thing is part uh, when customers come into the shop, um, we just don't take on anything. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It has to have a great story, and the the story that take uh, Taggy and Pammy <laughs> <laughs> came in with has been no sleep. Um, the story they came in with was about uh, a place that that this thing actually started in. You know, it started in Fairbowl with a uh, Stelner. Stelner. Stelner mm -hmm. did, and um, that to me was. It means a lot, you know, to be able to because we can restore almost anything, and who really cares? You get restored, and then somebody sells it. But this thing was for the community. Um, Tammy, you know, sort of came to us saying, "This is what we're going to do." I told her how much it was going to be. It was a little bit more because there was parts missing than uh, they had in their budget. She came home, found me a bonnet, you know, on the top of it. This was the mm -hmm. first part that was missing. Somebody gave it to them down, you know, downtown, donated it. Uh, it's all community kind of stuff, and to bring back. Uh, the memories, like you said, as people, kids, uh, people that have actually ridden the ride and came from here, and then to actually set it in, you know, downtown and then get pictures. I think it's just great. And I, you know, restoring it wasn't easy. Believe me, it was pretty rusty and gnarly, and it, it was missing parts. And we didn't ever do one except for Cowboy. Cowboy is uh, an old carny. And he's one of the guys that works at the shop. And he's just an honoriest guy known to man. And when he got in there, I remember. Uh, he, he, he's talking like a carny would, you know, the biggest, biggest ride on the midway. He's talking all this stuff, talking about how people used to yak and money fly out and girls, you know, he tell us all these fun stories. So it was a fun project. Have you done many other carnival rides before? Um, yeah, we've done carnival rides. I'm trying to think which one. We've done the uh, New Jersey. Shore. Oh, yeah, yeah. We did a, a, out of New Jersey. They had a a hurricane hit there and they had a ride the whole place was demolished mm -hmm. and we helped him out do a it was like a roller coaster bumper car kind of yeah. thing but yeah i mean restoring stuff's fun to us you know? so is it fun when you get something to, to not just see the finished product and to transition it from its previous state but into the restored version but also to learn a little bit about that i mean obviously you have to have an appreciation of history and what these mean to their communities and to the people that are bringing them to you yeah absolutely when, when anything gets restored basically as it gets torn down you're sort of seeing how they built it who how many times it's been painted what they did the heritage to it i mean we've done stuff for like thomas edit that thomas edison did and when you get into that stuff you feel it you know the same with the tilt war you're feeling you know some guy hand painting the thing you could see every layer you're peeling off each layer of life as you're tearing it apart and then when you're you know you paint everything but then when you're putting it back together and and to try to make it work or something it 
you got to sort of relate to the same thing that they did. You you see where they made shift. Uh, we're just going to fix this part. We got we're out on a, a property and we got to just weld it up, and that's the way it is. You know, and this is not the right caster, or this is not the right part. We're just going to weld it on there because we got to make money. That's that's what this yeah. ride's about. So it's it really is a good uh, you know good feeling when you when you take something and restore it because you're. Uh, you're, you're living the whole life of the project, each guy that works there, you know, and everybody at the shop loves what they do, me included. And uh, so with that love, we try to put out the best product we can. It's just it's not just, you know, to restore something and off it goes out the door. We're feeling the whole way through. Well, it requires quite a bit of ingenuity too. to, you know, some of those parts can't be found anymore, yeah. things like that. So you might have to adapt or modify as yeah. needed, which. It yes. takes a certain skill set. Yeah, absolutely. What happens is, is if it, my our policy is it comes in, it's missing parts. Best thing to do is try to find an erosion part. Some of the pieces are rare, like this one. I mean, where are you going to find this hood? So now I'm going to have to make it. And that's how it actually started. Um, I was going to start making the bonnet on the back. And Cowboy's telling me it's too low and it's not going to work. And I was drawing it up and I started welding it up in the in the fab shop and kelly ran in the place and said well, well, well you know i need to show you something so he takes me out back and uh here's this bonnet sitting out there that's that's basically intact it needs some work but it's intact so i don't have to build it and um because when you're you know you're restoring you try to make it exactly like it was and exactly mm -hmm. how it used to work and if you're missing a gear a cog a bolt or something you have to either research and find out what it looked like. You have to go into the, uh, you know, into the patent pending stuff. You see how they built it. You see what's there. And if you can't find one, you literally have to make it. And the talent that's there at the shop, the guys that work at the shop are the most amazing guys. I mean, I've had them for years, but they've gotten better every single, every single year. And they, uh, they basically can make almost anything. I'm very proud of them. You know, that's a tremendous skill set to have. Now. American Restoration has been on for five years. Prior to that, you said you did a little bit with Pond Stars. Yes. That kind of eased your way into the TV world. Yeah. How long have you been in business before that? And I mean, did you ever imagine that you'd be on national TV at this stage? Yeah, no, I was, uh, I've been doing this for 33 years, uh, restoring, uh, you know, and in the beginning, I shouldn't say it, for 25 years, it was a roller coaster ride. Talk about oh. carnival rides. It was, you know, you'd have to go out and find the stuff unrestored and you'd uh, run around the country, literally drive all over the country to try to sell it. And on your way back, you try to pick some more stuff so that you could restore and go back out all over the country. And it was it was brutal. It was a hard a hard road, you know. And uh, when and I got sort of tired of it, you know. At the, about my twenty fifth year, I got burnt out. I just wanted to I just wanted to just go surfing in Costa Rica. So <laughs> Kelly and I met right before that, a couple years before that, and. Uh, she had, I had a little bit going on with the restoration business and, and Kelly was working real estate and she came to me and said, uh, well, what, you know, I'll just, I'll help you uh, run the business end of this and, and, and let's get doing it again. I mean, so we started that and then when we got into the TV uh, thing, it changed my attitude about what I was doing. I used to take, restore things, sell them, the customers say thanks and that was it. There was not a lot of gratitude or appreciation. Well, when the show came out, I started restoring people's memories and their and their their feelings, their prized possessions that were just ruined and that had no life, and then to bring it back to life. And when I unveil it and I take the drape off there and they see it for the first time, like in its old day or its glory, the the looks and the smiles and the and the, and the tears and everything that goes along with it, and the appreciation is worth its weight in gold. I mean, I. I love what I do. I mean, I just love it. Now it gives me more appreciation for what I do. Well, and you can't put a value on that type of memory and that type of, you know, what this is going to do for our community here in Faribault. Yeah. This is such a tremendous asset yeah. and it's such a, a wonderful legacy. I mean, it was invented in 1926 is my yeah. understanding. Yeah. And it was built right here in Faribault that entire time. Yeah. He also built or invented the water slide. So yeah. maybe, maybe there's something for you to work on. I didn't know that. He invented the water slide. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. So next time you're, you know, cruising down one, think of yeah. that. Yeah. We went down to the old shop and it was just, it was awesome. It was just, it was awesome to think about something like that being built here and then sold all over the country. That's pretty amazing. You know what I mean? There's a little bitty town. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. And it's a beautiful town. And the community, I can tell, both Kelly and myself come from real small communities. And uh, to come down here is like coming back home. You know, it's very nice. Well, we're certainly happy to have you and you're invited back anytime you choose to do so. We've got a beautiful historic downtown. We'd love for you yeah. to explore some yeah. more. Yeah. Um, so what is the most unique thing that you've ever found to salvage? 
unique. That's a good word. Most days are hard or the unique. Um, I'd say the most unique thing that we did was a, uh, it was actually a suit uh, that an astronaut would wear uh, that he, uh, it's called an AMU suit. And it's basically a jetpack. So John Glenn and uh, one other one other uh, astronaut ended up, they were going to go, and this is what was going to put them through space, it, uh, you know, like propel them through space. So this is one of one. There's no no other one around, and uh, we ended up getting that in, and you got to be a rocket scientist to work on this thing, you know. It had tubes and wires and electronics, stuff that you would never see. And I can't remember what year it was. I want to think it was the 60s. But... Um, Stuff you wouldn't even think was available out there, but NASA had it, you know, and, and NASA was doing it. So we're inside this thing trying to make it do its thing. We come to find out that we probably shouldn't mess with all the wires because there had to be a thousand wires in there. So what we did was we we just basically made sure everything was right and, and, and put back together. It didn't rip it apart. But the exterior of it was all aluminum. And it was a special grade aluminum, so it was all dented. Somebody had, he found it in a in a junkyard. And How does something of that magnitude and just, cultural significance end up there? You know, absolutely. You have to wonder that. No, I, I absolutely. And this guy that found it was a collector. He came into Rick Harrison at the pawn shop and he wanted to pawn it. I, I can't remember what he wanted to do. He, they, they made an episode out of it. The next thing you know, Rick brought him into our shop and said, I think this guy would be good for restoring it. And I was like, it's the kind of piece that, like you said, significant value or, or heritage or uh, history that they came about as you as you turn it apart they actually had john glenn and i think it was grissom i think i can't remember the other other uh, astronaut but they signed the bottom of it so it was real it was a real deal and uh anyways we got it all done and uh it looked beautiful and now, now i went to a museum so those i mean that's all good. everything that we do those are great pieces i mean think about it you we restore something it goes to the museum we restore something and it goes in the town right on the right on the corner of the street that everybody in town's going to see and it's some you know huge heritage of their town yeah, i mean this what, what we do is i love what we do i just you know it's very honorable and i'm always honored to well, do everything and, like that. and you're seeing and touching and working on things mm -hmm. that most people if ever they're lucky yeah. enough to see yeah. will be behind glass yeah but to say that you yeah. had a hand in bringing yes. it to that level is yes. really exciting yeah. no it is it, it is it's a thrilling ride and i i think you know before in the beginning all i did was coke machines and gas pumps and jukeboxes and candy machines just the normal 50s coin op stuff and because of this show it made everybody better and it made it challenged me i mean i remember my sixth piece wasn't a Coke machine or gas pump. It was some, I forget what it was. I think it was a, a, a 1918 vacuum that used to be used for trains. And it was the size of a car. And uh, it was like, how the heck do I do this? You know, I didn't know. Yeah. But we all jumped in it, a um, little challenged, a little reluctant, you know, and then pulled it together. I mean, we're, we're making mistakes every day. Everybody makes mistakes. But as long as you learn from your mistakes and keep trying and don't give up, you know, you can you can do it. You can endure. You can make it happen. But it's I mean, it's a great, great life, great business. Well, I'm all family business, too. It's really, really nice. Well, and that perseverance is something you guys really had to do and utilize when trying to find the funding and the pieces and bring this all together. Can you tell us more about that process? Um, well, the Fairbolt Main Street Group, which I'm part of, um, did a survey or a what would they, market, survey? market survey in 2011, and uh, when the um, consultant gave us the results of the survey, he um, pointed out that we have um, a very big part of our history right here in town with the tilt whirl, and he said he suggested that we get a couple of the cars, refurbish them, and put them on Central Avenue for everyone to see, for photo ops, for tourists. And I thought that was a great idea. So then I was um, talking with Tammy Sluter one night and um, she thought it was a great idea too. So I told her I had contacted Harleys and they had three of them, but he just hasn't had the chance to pull them out yet. Well, then Tammy took over and uh, made it happen. So um, she stopped in at Harleys and had them pull them out. And my husband stopped there with the trailer and brought them out to our place. Uh, we were sitting around at supper that night and my husband said to us, uh, so how many years are those going to sit in our <laughs> back lot? <laughs> you know, and uh, what Tammy 
didn't like to hear that. So um, her and her husband were watching American Restoration. You want to go from here? Sure. Yeah. I don't remember if it was that same night or the next week. Uh, my husband's a huge wannabe historian, so we watch all those History Channel shows. And uh, he just flippantly said after American Restoration, we should see if they want to do it. And so we literally watched the end of the program, found out who the production company was. I sat down. It was 8.30 at night on a Thursday. Typed an email. Hey, we got this tilt whirl Think it might be something you're interested in. And the production company called me the next morning and said, we want it. So it was that it happened that quick. Well, and what a great timing, you know, to just happen to have that moment of watching a show you already enjoy. You're sitting there and to, for it to come together so nicely. Oh, we need this item restored. Here's this great opportunity for it to come together. And you guys had a chance to travel to Vegas for that, right? We did, yep. Uh, the show is actually obviously filmed in Las Vegas. So that's when you talk about how it came together. That's when the community really started to step up and say, hey, you know, we can do this. McDonough Trucking said, well, we've got a truck that goes out there every other week. We'll take it for you. So they took it out there and dropped it off for us. The folks down at Gold Star said, well, we've got a bonnet. You know, we can donate. They did that, sent it out there, um, you know, and then people started, you know, through the Fair Above Foundation. Um, so all of the uh, donations are tax deductible. Uh, and so the donations started to come in and people just, you know, sent checks to, off to Reliance Bank and we were able to raise the funds that we needed. Um, we have a little leftover in the kitty and we're hoping that, that by seeing this one that's finished, there's another one sitting right next to it, number two, <laughs> yeah. that needs to be refurbished. And we want that one to be done locally. But like the first, it needs, you know, the community to help us fund to get it done. But we've already contacted several former Selner employees and hoping that they'll be able to refurbish that. Maybe they can show you guys up for it. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> Send them my way as soon as they're done. <laughs> there you go. You're looking to grow your yeah, employee yeah, list. Yeah. yeah, it's a great community. I mean, to be able to pull together small town, kind of, that stuff is that's charming and it's impressive because you get out in the big world, they're, they're, they'll, they'll run over you out there. Yep. That's, so that's a very awesome feeling for Kelly and myself to come up here and have that feeling, right, babe? Mm -hmm. And it really is tremendous to see the community come together and support this. And hopefully there'll be a good showing for this afternoon. It's at 3 p.m. in front of Burkhardt's Meyer Shoes on Central Avenue in Fairville. There's a brief reception to follow. And if you have questions, will you guys be around to answer questions, take photos, that sort yes. of thing? Yeah, we'll be here. And if you don't show up, I'm going to knock on your door because there's a lot of good stuff in this town. <laughs> <laughs> have you had a chance to explore? Yeah, the I mean, well, it didn't take very long. Yeah, we've already been over to Gold Star and they're you know, just amazed by some of the carnival things oh, that they have at oh, Gold Star. Oh, and yeah, it's like eye candy. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. And as soon as we're done here, we're going over to Harley's Auto Salvage. Uh, I understand. Bringing it full circle. Yep, and I understand that Shelly has made goodies for these guys, so... Oh, homemade goodies. Oh, how, oh yeah. How could you go wrong? High. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for stopping in. We appreciate oh, having you. And we hope everyone in the community is able to pop down 3 p.m. Central Avenue. They're going to unveil the Tilt World. You can have your photo taken with that. You can have your photo taken with Rick and Peggy and Tammy, as well as Kelly. They're all going to be down there. You can maybe even get an autograph signed. And we appreciate you doing so. That's today's Talk Around the Water Cooler, courtesy of Colgan Affairboat from Power 96.